Did you know that Hughes once took one of his aircraft, the Lockheed Super Electra to be exact, and made a low approach over his girlfriend's house right before he and three of his friends continued the journey and set a record for circumnavigating the globe in just under 91 hours? Or that he once bought a Vegas hotel after they tried to kick him out for not gambling enough? Howard was not only an American businessman, record-setting pilot, engineer, film producer, and a philanthropist, he was also known during his lifetime as one of the most influential and richest people in the world, all of which have resulted in some incredible stories about his life. Welcome to Aviation Lifestyle, where we explore the fascinating world of aviation history and culture. In this episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the life of one of the most enigmatic figures in aviation history, Howard Hughes. Known for his larger-than-life personality and eccentric behavior, Hughes was a true visionary who made an indelible mark on the aviation industry. But before we begin, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future aviation-related content. So buckle up and get ready for an exciting journey as we explore the life and legacy of Howard Hughes, a man who truly embodied the aviation lifestyle. Howard Hughes packed a lot into his 70 years of life. Born into wealth due to his father inventing a rotary bit for oil well drilling that made his small family a large fortune, Hughes inherited the lion's share when both of his parents passed away when he was just a teen. To say Hughes was an ambitious eccentric would be an understatement. Money, as history has proven thus far, has a way of making people go a bit crazy, and when the person in question is already dipping the scale as Hughes was, it doesn't take much to push them over the edge. Around 1926, Howard Hughes started to dip his toes into the film industry and used a nice chunk of his fortune to form RKO Pictures. He produced several movies, and Hughes' biggest film endeavor was Hell's Angel, which cost him big money and big stress. The film was released in 1930 and was directed by Hughes himself. From day one, the making of Hell's Angels was trouble. Three pilots died during the filming. Huge chunks of the film had to be reshot when cinema made the transition from silent films to talkies as it was known, and the production took three years to complete. Obsessive when it came to cinema, Hughes would often shut himself off in the world for months on end, in his private screening room, nude, while eating candy bars and drinking milk, according to Wired. Hughes' other films include Scarface from 1932 to Arabian Nights and The Outlaw. During the 1930s, Hugh began to seriously pursue his passion for flying, establishing Hughes Aircraft Company in 1932 and setting a series of aviation records. In 1935, he broke the record for flying a plane over land, traveling 352 miles per hour near Santa Ana, California. Two years later, he set a record for transcontinental U.S. speed, journeying from Burbank, California to Newark, New Jersey in 7 hours and 28 minutes and 25 seconds. On the 10th of July, 1938, Hughes and a four-man crew took off from Brooklyn Floyd Bennett Field on an around-the-world flight. After dipping his Lockheed Super Electra wings over the home of his girlfriend, Katrine Hepburn, Hughes made refueling stops in Paris, Moscow, Omsk, and Yokosk. Fairbanks and Minneapolis before landing back in Brooklyn. There, thousands of spectators greeted Hughes, who had set a new world record for circumnavigating the globe with a time of 3 days, 19 hours, and 17 minutes. He was hailed a hero and honored with ticker tape parade in New York City and celebrations all around the country. As a trained pilot, Hughes would sometimes perform tests for Hughes Aircraft Company himself, something that often put him in great danger. He was no stranger to accidents, and Hughes crashed a military prototype called the XF-11 reconnaissance aircraft during a test pilot session in 1946. Throughout his flying career, he was involved in no less than four near-fatal accidents, and each took a severe toll on his physical and mental health. Doctors gave Hughes codeine for his injuries, which he would develop a dependency on, and take it throughout the rest of his life. When World War II hit, Hughes became obsessed with creating aircraft for military and focused on building something capable of transporting troops and supplies across the Atlantic Ocean. The end result of his efforts was the largest wooden airplane ever constructed, the Hughes H-4 Hercules, more commonly known as Spruce Goose, a nickname Hughes himself hated. Made out of laminated birch, not spruce, because the use of metals was limited during wartime. By the time the plane was completed, the war had ended and there was no longer any use for it. The Spruce Goose made one voyage, flown by Hughes himself, for only one mile and was never flown again. 
It's currently maintained as the focal point of Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in Oregon. Always something of a loner, Hughes went into complete seclusion in 1950. However, in 1953, he established the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, perhaps as a result of his extreme fear of germs. Hughes is said to have worn Kleenex boxes on his feet and lay naked in hotel rooms in the dark, which he felt was the perfect way to avoid coming into contact with contaminants. It's also said that if someone who was ill got anywhere near Hughes, he'd burn the clothes he was wearing. Ironically, toward the end of Hughes' life, he completely let his hygiene go, refusing to bathe or brush his teeth. He didn't believe germs could come from him, just from the outside. Faced with a huge tax bill in California, he decided to move to Las Vegas in late 1966, arriving by private train car and taking up residence on the top floor of the Desert Inn. When the hotel owners tried to evict Hughes and his staff, who didn't gamble, in order to free up room for high roller guests, Hughes decided to buy the place for $13 million. Afterward, he went on a Vegas buying spree, snapping up other hotel casinos, an airport and airline, and various tracts of undeveloped land. Also, because Hughes, by then a recluse who never left his desert in penthouse, wanted to watch his favorite old movies on late night TV, and the city had no all night stations, so he acquired a local TV station of his own. Slowly turning insane, reports say Hughes' habits were unusual, borderline crazy, and OCD like. Examples of this include Hughes demanding his employees store his urine in containers, isolating himself at months on end, worrying about becoming sick from germs. At one point, he even detailed a manual for a staff, in writing on how to open a can of peaches and serve it in a bowl in a very specific way. After four years in Vegas, during which time he became one of Nevada's biggest employers and private landholders, he left abruptly in 1970. From 1966 to his debt ten years later, he essentially disappeared from sight, limiting his exposure to other people and only leaving his hotel room to make it to a different hotel. Due to his picky eating and drug addiction, Hughes' health declined, and he died of kidney failure in 1976. Hughes was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame in 1973, and was included in Flying Magazine's 2013 list of the 51 Heroes of Aviation, ranking at number 25. In conclusion, Howard Hughes was a true pioneer in aviation, and a man whose life was filled with both triumphs and struggles. He pushed the boundaries of what was possible in aviation, and left a lasting legacy as one of the most important figures in the industry. His story is truly amazing, and serves as an inspiration to anyone who dreams of achieving greatness. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this video on Howard Hughes, the real aviator. And we'll see you in the new video. Take care.